In this video, I wanna show you one way in which we can have one blueprint actor in our level reference another actor in the level, which is pretty handy because by breaking this out into a separate blueprint actor, we're keeping things modular, but we still may need a way to reference something. And in particular, I'm going to change this around so that instead of having an audio component attached to this trigger volume, I think I would rather require a reference to some audio component in my level that I can use audio volume to trigger. So think of an example where you, you're playing a horror game and you might walk through a doorway and you enter the trigger volume, I might wanna trigger a sound that happens behind the player because I think it would be creepy. Um, but in order to do that, we need customization for each object. And this is just one example of how to reference other objects and I'm just using audio in this example, but you could, you could reference any other objects you want, and I wanna show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open up our blueprint actor right here that we've been working with, and I need to change the setup. So right now, I have an audio component, and I'm playing my audio component right here, and instead, I don't want an audio component, and I wanna reference some audio that exists in the level. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to delete out my audio component and my references to it. To do that, I'm just gonna get rid of the play node right there on the end. So we're still doing our delay here. We're just not playing the audio. And now I'm gonna go over to the component. You can right click, delete that, or I just hit the delete key. Once we have this, compile, save. You'll see we don't have our audio anymore. Now what we want to do is we wanna create a reference to a variable type of audio somewhere in our level that we can fill in as the designer. We can just drag and drop something, some other audio in the level into our blueprint inside of our details panel and tell it to play. In order to do that, I'm going to need to make a variable out of that audio component. So one easy way to find out what type of variable we need, if you come back to your scene right here, you can see all the types inside of your world outliner. This is a list view of everything that exists inside of your scene. If we were to add a audio to our scene, so let me go down to starter content and audio. This collapse one is pretty good. If we add an audio there or if we drag in the queue, either way, actually, let me delete that, drag in the queue, which the queue is just a pre-designed assembly of sounds, you could think of it like that. Either way, you drag a sound in or drag some uh, cue that you've configured in. And both, when you add it into the level, you see this type over there under this dropdown. It's a type of ambient sound. So if we want to reference a sound that exists inside of our map, I think it makes sense to reference an ambient sound. And you can find other types over here if you need them. So what we need to do is we need to create a variable on our blueprint of type ambient sound and just leave it empty. And then a designer can come in here and specify which ambient sound inside of the map they want to put in there. So to do that, I'm gonna open up my blueprint, just like this. I'm going to make a new variable and call this ambient audio to play. Just a little bit verbose, but I think it's clear. And on variable type, you'll notice if you click the drop down, these are, these are very primitive data types and uh, very base level types. So th these are your common ones, but if you have any sort of custom classes, likely you're not gonna see it in this list. Easiest way to find it is to start typing in here. Once I know what I'm looking for, it's much easier. So if you start typing in ambient sound, you'll see that. And if you drag over here, you're going to see a few different options. And I, I wanna briefly describe these, but for us, the top two are gonna be the most relevant. An object reference is a reference to, to an actor that already exists inside of our level. So think of this as an instance of a thing. So if our audio already exists in our level or if an enemy has already been spawned, any object that already exists, we can, as long as we declare the type, we can reference that object through this top one. This class reference is useful if you want to get the type of the object, but not an already existing or um, instance of a thing. So for example, if I wanted to spawn a type of enemy, 
then I may want a class reference of the enemy type I want to spawn, and then I can create an object from that. So if I'm trying to reference something that already exists in the level, generally I want an object reference. So when I click that, the object reference, you'll see variable type. I do want to be able to select this inside of my details panel. So I do want to expose it to the designer. So I'm going to click that little checkbox right there. Compile save. And first, let's just make sure that this is exposing correctly. So if you minimize, come back in here. See ambient audio to play. If you click that drop down, you can actually see all of the types of ambient audio or ambient sound because it's looking for an object reference inside of our scene. Or we can actually just pick the actor from scene with this little eye drop, hover over it. Select it that way. If you name it properly, it's easy to do the drop down. If you don't, you probably should, but you always have the option to do this. So we connected this reference. We're saying this blueprint actor, look for this specific object, and then it's a matching type of variable. So we now have a connection here. When I enter this trigger volume, I have a reference to this object. Now I need to tell this object to play. So if I hop back into my audio trigger, because this is a variable over here, I can easily get a reference to it just by dragging over here, get ambient audio to play. And from here, it's actually pretty easy. If I drag off of the ambient audio, any other audio component, which we'll have to drill down in, into the audio component, you'll see if I type in play right here, you'll see we have a couple options. Very simply, I just want to play the audio. You could play sound 2D or play sound at location, but in that case, we don't even need the other audio source. We could just create a new one at a location and play the sound. So I want to be able to pre-configure that other audio component, which is in the scene, which our sound designer can place and manipulate or whatever. And I just want to tell it to play. So if I select play, should look like this. Connect that. You'll see we can still do our delay here before we play this audio component. But now it is playing the audio component that is referenced through the scene, which if you remember is specified by the designer. So each time we place in an audio trigger, we could actually pull in a different audio source or a, um, or a different ambient sound for each audio trigger, which is now even more modular. The downside is it just re requires a little bit of designer micromanagement, but that could be a good thing too. So I'm gonna test this out and you're gonna notice something as soon as I hit the play button. You see how it automatically played? One thing you may remember is that with audio, similar to particle effects, you scroll down, Auto activate comes checked by default. This is because many sounds you may just want to be playing by default. A lot of ambient audio you may just want playing in the background. In this case, you wanna trigger it, so make sure to turn that off and save it. Then when we hit play, it won't play. But now when we enter the trigger, it's playing from that audio source and it actually I think should be re-triggerable. But you'll notice the other one doesn't really trigger because, and you'll see this error right here, we may wanna do some sort of null checking, but um, I think it's useful to see that we're not hooked up to an audio trigger, so we don't need it. Um, but you'll notice that this one actually does not have we have not specified an ambient audio to play. So just know that this is one of the downsides is you're exposing it to the designer and they are now required to do some additional work. But again, that can be a good thing and it does offer additional control. And I think it's pretty handy to know. We've been using audio and you know particles and lights and stuff, but you can do a lot more and I do encourage you to experiment a little bit and just see what sort of things you can do if, if you can manipulate some other objects by getting a reference to its class and then calling something on it.